I happen to think financial literacy is really, 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 really important, which will surprise no one, given that I've been hosting this show for years, I've written books, I've been talking about money for two decades. Uh, but where it could receive even more airtime is at work. And there are certainly some employers who value uh, financial wellness. They think about it almost in the same way as they think about uh, physical wellness or mental health wellness. And today we're gonna focus on financial literacy in the workplace, what that means, who you can resource, all those sorts of things. Our guest is Steve Bridge. He is a, an advice only financial planner. He works with Money Coaches Canada and he joins us now from Vancouver. Hello there. Good day, Bruce. So you see clients one-to-one -one all the time. Uh, you also do work in organizations. Why is that an opportunity? Why is that important? Uh, well, there's two reasons it's an opportunity. One is, uh, the main one is that I can reach more people than working one-on-one -on -one with a couple. You know, you help them and, and maybe you help their kids or something like that. But speaking to a group of people, you're impacting that many more people at one time. When, when an employer uh, is considering bringing someone in to talk about financial literacy, do you think this works in every organization or does it really need to be consistent with the values of the organization in which they, they think holistically about an employee's life? Uh, yeah, and, and there's, ideally it's for, it's for uh, altruistic purposes that they want to improve the financial decisions that their employees make, improve, improve the financial uh, situation of their employees. Um, there's also a selfish reason to do it. Um, and well, why don't we start with that one first and then, and then go to the altruistic one. Um, almost half of Canadians have stated that uh, worrying about money impacts their performance at work to the point where um, cash-strapped employees are almost six times more likely to miss deadlines and almost five times more likely to produce wow. lower quality work. So you could say they can do it uh, to improve their bottom line or their efficiency or their the productivity of their organization. Um, the uh, Can we say the, the good ones will do it because they care about their employees and they want to improve their financial situation. Um, as you and I know, money is the number one thing that people stress over. And um, this does impact their their time at work. We, we, we weren't taught uh, these things in school is starting to change a little bit, we're happy to say. Um, but without hiring someone and without trying to wade through the internet, where can someone get solid uh, information on mm -hmm. finances? Um, and you and I could talk about money literally for days, weeks, and months because it's our work, it's our passion. Uh, if you've got an hour with an employer, with a mm -hmm. group of employees mm -hmm. in, a, in a cafeteria or on a Zoom call, mm -hmm. what are the top one or two topics you want to ensure that you cover? Uh, Bruce, it's the stuff that uh, you have been going on for quite a long time, me, uh, almost as long. Uh, it's the fundamentals. It is the goals. What's important to me? Is my money going towards them? It is net worth. Is there any better barometer of how you're doing uh, than net worth? What are my assets? What are my liabilities? Tracking those over uh, months and, and years to see if it's going the right way. And then the big one is cash flow, the money coming in, the money going out. Am I spending more than what's coming in? That's where I start. If I have a limited time, and that's where I would recommend that everybody uh, everybody start with uh, with those things. I'm going to take the case that some of our listeners actually have a line item in their budget for this sort of thing. What should they expect to pay to have someone come in and talk to their people about money? Right. It uh, as many things in personal finance, it depends. You might get someone willing to come in um, for free on a pro bono basis, maybe for a few hundred bucks an hour. Uh, an expert speaker might cost up to a few thousand dollars uh, for an hour session. Now, on that, uh, a company, a human resource department might want to look at the purpose of the person coming in, their background. Are they there with a background with uh, the idea of perhaps selling a product or pitching a product or service? 
And I may be a little bit biased here. My preference would be an advice only financial planner or money coach, someone who has been in the trenches with people's finances and uh, who isn't there to um, to sell products right off the bat. Nothing wrong with selling products, uh, of course, but having a solid grip on the fundamentals and being more knowledgeable about making choices around products, investments, insurance should be in place before you actually go and um, by the the products and investments. Yeah, and certainly uh, I remember just in in the beginning of my financial literacy work, there was never a very big, big budget, and there were lots of people who were happy to come in and do a kind of a seminar because it yes. was a business development opportunity for them. That was a way they could attract, you know, financial planning clients. It's not to say that uh, they didn't provide value, but it is a different context for that for that visit. I want to ask you about, um, so in a uh, smaller room or a room in which you can have more intimacy, what is the level of disclosure you would expect to have with a room of people, given that these are your peers, these are your coworkers, Mm. people can be reticent about Mm. talking authentically about Mm. what's really going on in their financial life. I found that the smaller the group, those 10, 12, 15, and the longer the session, there's some kind of correlation between the size of the group and the length of the session that people are more willing to open up. And it's pretty great when you have an engaging conversation around money. Uh, Money is uh, not talked about enough, as you and I know, and um, having a safe space without judgment can really open up the conversation. I've had really uh, personal questions, posed and uh, I feel honored that that people are willing to do that. So building a level of trust, you know, in a room of 100 people and it's a, you know, a quick overview, it's it's not so much. You still get some good questions, but yeah. there are some very obvious connections between general financial literacy and an employer in terms of things like uh the company match on an RRSP, ensuring that you utilize as many of your employee benefits to mitigate health and wellness expenses. What are the most important connections that you would draw, given the context of the room that you're in, such that you get the most, uh, they have the most insight from, from your time with them? Right. So once you once you've got a good handle on the 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 basic fundamentals, the essential fundamentals that we talked about, then uh, the time allowing and perhaps a second session, you get into uh, group RSPs matching. It's free money, but it's surprising how many people are hesitant to sign up for a matching. They think there's some kind of catch or something like that. Um, So what is your pension plan like? Is it a defined benefit? Is it a defined contribution? Um, Do they understand? Do people understand how fortunate they are to be with an employer? who has a pension or even a group RSP Um, and something down to interestingly the paycheck and all the details of someone's paycheck. There are a lot of numbers. There are a lot of little abbreviations. There's almost never a legend. Why does my paycheck go up towards the end of the year? And then it goes down in January. What just happened? Well, it's because of Canada pension plan and employment insurance uh, deductions uh, stopping and then starting up again in January. And when you start a new job, sometimes you're hesitant to bother the HR department or you don't want to sound, uh, uh, I don't know, ignorant of, of what the mm-hmm. paycheck, or you don't know what your paycheck. Anyway, um, something is, is basically that. And, and you should be, a presenter should be tailoring to what's important mm-hmm. to that specific workplace. Are there any boundaries that you worry about crossing in an organization? So for example, uh, one of the things that I would talk about if it was a general environment is you got to ask for a raise. You got to do everything you can to increase your income. I might be less passionate about that message if I was being paid by an employer. Uh, Yeah, so that's definitely uh, tiptoeing, shall we say. Uh, through that little minefield. And obviously everyone needs to be paid uh, a fair wage. And uh, so I don't, I don't actually talk about um, asking for a raise unless I'm talking to human resource professionals, because getting the message across that this matters, you, you can, when speaking with human resource professionals, when people are, are short of money, they're not doing well, there's three things that they'll do. They'll ask for a raise They'll find another job or they'll go into debt. None of those is good for your company. 
Asking for a raise, it's it, so teaching people to manage their money better is actually the, the best solution for everybody, for the employee and the company and the human resource professional. Very interesting stuff. Steve, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. You're very welcome, Bruce. Nice to see you. Steve Bridge is an advice only financial planner. His, uh, his firm is called Money Coaches Canada. And one of the things that he does is works with employers to have this conversation about financial literacy. If you are someone with any influence in your organization, either you've got a line item to bring in a speaker uh, or you can influence the person who does orchestrate those sessions, I highly recommend financial literacy being a topic that, um, that you host in an organization. You'll be amazed at the conversations that occur in the cafeteria or the food court after the fact. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Bruce.